Hey guys, MC Stu here, and today we're going to take a look at some basic tips and tricks for Star Trek Online. Uh, this is going to be primarily for new, brand new players, um, and if you have played for a while, uh, you might get something new out of it as well. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right on into it. Um, the first thing is something that was extremely annoying for me for quite a while until I figured out we could make an adjustment, and that is your ship loadouts transferring um, to a new ship when you don't want it to. Um, so let's take a look at that. So right now we have a uh, Odyssey here slotted and we are currently uh, in this ship. We're gonna go ahead and grab a new ship that we wanna use. Uh, let's just pick one that has a similar kind of a layout here. We're gonna claim that. All right, so that has been claimed. So I am still in the Odyssey here. Let's go ahead and take a look at this ship. So this ship is not readied. Um, I don't want to use any of the gear that's on it, so we're going to unequip the console that comes with it, and then we're going to go through and delete all of this stuff. Um, so there's going to be two different ways to go about uh, using this, depending on what it is that you're wanting to do. Um, this ship kind of has a little bit of a different uh, layout, but that's okay. We'll still be able to uh, use this for the example. So let's go ahead and get the rest of this deleted off of here. Um, so there's two different ways. So let's say that the ship I'm currently in, which is an Odyssey, let's say that I want this ship to have basically the same build or pretty much all of the same parts on the ship. Um, by default, your settings will be set to transfer all of the items from your current ship that fit onto the new ship. So for instance, if we take a look at um, tactical consoles, I have f uh, four here. This ship only has two. So it's only gonna transfer two of them over, obviously. So you will have to kind of pick um, and, and pull around some of the things that you want. So if we take a look in the settings under options, and for some reason that always ends up being at the bottom here, we're gonna go to basic and if we take a look at the third one down here, move equipment items, equipped items to newly readied ship. So right now it's turned on. Um, so if I were to ready this next ship here, all of the items that are on the other one are gonna be put on as long as, that, as, long as they, they sync up. So, and I'll show that in a moment. Let's say that I'm gonna do a whole new build on this ship, okay? One of the most irritating things is I ready this ship, all the stuff moves over. Now I got to move it all off the ship and build out the ship the way that I want it. And it's just really annoying. If you don't want that to happen, you just turn this off, hit apply, and that will not happen. When you ready this ship, it'll still just be empty and you can go ahead and build the ship out. Um, and let's just take a look at, because obviously if I turn this off and I do the example, the ship's just going to stay empty. Now, if this is off and I ready this ship, this only works that first time. So if I left this off and I did want to transfer it over and I readied this ship um, and nothing was on it, and then I said, oh wait, I wanted to transfer all of that and I go back and I ready this one here and turn it back on, it's not going to work after that first time. Um, so let's just take a look at what that looks like with it on. And this is how it should be for you default. So let's apply and we're going to ready the ship and it's going to pull everything over that it can fit. So obviously the other ship that we were on um, didn't have a fifth weapon up front. Um, so if we wanted to, you know, grab one, we could take the Omni, drag it over to our inventory and then move it up to this ship. Same thing with the science or the engineering slots. Uh, if I go down here, um, I don't have anything that's universal, so I'd have to fill it with something else. So uh, that's for a whole nother video. But just know that you can turn off and on that automatic equipping. It can be extremely annoying if it's set one way or the other, depending on what your purposes are for the new ship. Um, and that's under basic controls under the options setting. All right, that's tip number one. Let's take a look at tip number two. So tip number two is going to be for your tray adjustments. Um, so on your tray, down here at the bottom is where we have all your activatables. When you start the game, you are going to start with it looking like this. And that is not a lot. So if we click the second one down, it looks like three little squares, um, all in a uh, kind of horizontal or diagonal stacked, you can click on three and that's going to give you three squares. Ground is somewhat limited. There's not a, a ton there. Um, so in space, you'll have a lot more that you can do with that. Um, if we hit F12, 
you can move your tray around again there's not a whole lot that you can do on on ground there to adjust that but it does start off with just one and you'll end up very quickly with a ton of abilities that there's not enough room to just fit on one tray um, so that can be a little bit annoying um, can we rotate? It doesn't even look like we can rotate it on ground. Okay, let's go ahead and jump up to space because that's going to be probably what you're doing most of the time and take a look at the tray adjustments in space. There's quite a bit more. Okay, we are in space and this ship is looking pretty funky here. <laughs> we just have the basic uh, loadout that we transferred over, but let's let's try and ignore that for now. Um, so when we're in space, you'll see here I have two separate trays. Again, this starts off with one or two uh, stock. Um, and you'll have the same little button here on your main tray and on the secondary tray that I currently have. Um, so you would click that and you can do up to 10 trays. Um, you can also split these trays up um, to have you know five and five or as I have four and four um, with the, the different organization here. So you can switch you know which trays or what by hitting these ups and up and down arrows. Um, so if we click on this one here, I could say I want this to be six of them. Um, and obviously that's right in the middle of the screen so we can hit F12 again and we could you know move this wherever we want it. Um, for the secondary tray, let's show how we got that. So if we start off here, let's go back to where I was at with four. So I have four of them and I like to have a secondary tray. If we hit F12, you'll see here it says new and that'll give us a new tray here. Um, this generally is going to start in a or a vertical position. So if we click on those three little buttons again, you can actually rotate it. So there's the rotation. That's how it'll, how it'll start for you. Um, and then you can drag that around, kind of get it to about where you want. And if you want it to be sideways, hit the three little squares, hit the rotate again. It's going to drop it probably not exactly where you want it. Hit F12 and you can reorientate that. Um, to move around your abilities on there, you're going to hit the top button here on the tray. And you can do this on either one. It's basically the same button. You're going to want to unlock your tray and then right click and drag things around to where you want them. You'll also find as you unlock captain's abilities and slot things, it's not always going to just pop up on here. So you'll want to scroll through this list. You can see, you know, there's all kinds of stuff that is not on it. Um, and you can left click when you pull it out of the list and drop that to wherever you would like it. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to tip number three. So this is kind of in the same vein, um, depending on the size of your monitor, or how good your eyes are, or for me, if I'm live streaming or if I'm making these kinds of videos, um, there is a way to adjust the size of your UI and it can be very, very helpful. Uh, I know for myself, you know, once you start getting all of this stuff here, I'd like to make it a little bit bigger in some instances. At first I wanted it smaller because I wanted to be able to see more. Um, but I've kind of gone the other way because I lose track of my mouse and I'm trying to click abilities. Um, so it's up to you which way you want to go on that. If you have a smaller screen and you can see just fine, you may want to make it a little bit smaller so that you, um, you know, can see more of what's going on and enjoy, you know, the way the game looks. So to do that under the basic settings, again, we're going to go down a second to the bottom here and you can adjust your UI size. So if we turn this down, say like to 85, which is how I used to play or close to. 82 and we hit apply you see that stuff gets very very small now i have a 1440 um so this gets really really small if i if i bring it down to, to something like that uh, you could also scale it up fairly large and hit apply and it's much much bigger um, so this is a nice adjustment to kind of you know curtail this to the size that you want so that it's comfortable to play or if you're someone that makes content or live streams or those kinds of things sometimes you want to have a little bit more of you know the game showing and you want the stuff to be smaller but maybe you only have a 1080 monitor um, and so you don't have quite as much you know area to work with it's nice to uh, make that a little bit smaller, but you can adjust that quite a bit in either direction. I mean, you can make it like ridiculously big if you want to. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that, um, but this option is here and it makes things very, very nice to get it set up just the way that you want it. All right, let's move on to tip number four. So tip number four is something they've just added in here and it is the notification settings. Um, I'm sure you've noticed um, watching this video that there's been multiple logins, logouts, uh, people winning this, uh, winning that, you know, doing whatever you get this, this flyer is what they call it or fly in. And I don't even really see it anymore. Um, 
except for when I, you know, make a um, demo record, you know, cinematic video, and I'm not seeing it when I'm making it, and I'm going back when I'm all finished, and it's there. Uh, there's one right there, and so that can be kind of annoying just in general to have that popping up on your screen while you're just trying to play the game. You can turn that off. Um, it actually breaks down into, you know, all the different kind of categories of which ones you might want to see or which ones you might not want to see. So admin announcements, gameplay announcements, and it just goes on and on. Um, so these are going to show up in your chat as well, depending on how you have your chat set up. But you can actually control these notifications right from this little drop down screen here right under your map. And so I, I would recommend if that irritates you, just turn off all of the fly ins. A anything that you might want to see, you can be able to look at and see in your chat box. Uh, by default, that stuff's all going to be there. Um, I have most of that hidden on, on the channel that I, I keep up there. Um, so to get rid of that annoying stuff, just start unclicking all of this and you will not have any of those coming in and annoying you while you're trying to enjoy the game. All right. Next, let's take a look at keybinds. For that, I am going to switch out ships. Okay, here we go. We are back in the Odyssey. Um, this is not going to be a tutorial on how to do keybinds. Um, I do have a video on that, which I'll link down in the description if you're interested in setting that up. Um, but I just want to bring attention to, if you're unaware, um, keybinds are a thing in the game, and they are extremely helpful. Um, I have started to expand mine somewhat, um, but at a minimum, you know, setting up just kind of a basic spam bar for some of the abilities that you want to just have up and running all the time. So for instance, this is a beam overload build. So my number seven bar here is connected to my space bar. It also fires all my weapons. And so as I'm playing, I am just clicking this and it is keeping these abilities that I want to have up as much as possible um being up as much as possible so there's some things you know like universal consoles things like that where they have longer cooldowns and you want to be able to use them in specific instances something like that you're not going to want on your spam bar because you're going to want to determine exactly when you're going to use that same thing say like with the tractor beam or some of my oncon procs those kinds of things i'm not going to put on my spam bar so, but having these keybinds can be very helpful. If you're doing more complicated builds, some of the higher end torp builds, um, I'll use uh, row seven and 10 for different firing sequences or different kinds of attacks. Or maybe I have all of these clickies that are really high damage output, short duration, long cooldown things on a whole nother one. So, you know, when we're going up against the boss, I can just quickly, you know, hit one of the other keys, F key or G key or whatever I want it to be. And I can just click that a couple times and that activates all of that. Because um, as you can see, and I'm sure you're seeing on your builds, these, you know, the, these bars get really, really busy and there's just a lot of stuff happening. And there's some things that, like I said, you just want up all the time and you don't want to have to think about it. You don't want to have to find that while you're trying to time out some of these other things. Put them on a key bind. It makes things very, very easy. Again, a link will be down in the description uh, for you to uh, see how to set that up. I also have some sample key bind files. If you want to use those, it's pretty straightforward. Um, and if you're interested in that, go ahead and check out that video. All right, let's go ahead and move on to tip number six. So tip number six is a uh, little trick to get around where you want to go. Let's say it's for endeavors or I don't know, you're playing with friends, whatever it may be. Um, sometimes, you know, uh, I'll be here at ESD and, um, you know, I'm just doing my dailies, whatever. Or maybe I'm going to play in a group with some people cross faction and we want to mess around together, whatever it may be. And let's say I want to get over to Deep Space Nine. Uh, let's say I don't have a trans warp ability to get there, which I don't think I do here. Or let's say you're Gemidar and you do, but it's on cooldown. Um, there is a few missions well, there's every mission basically is going to have a trans warp ability. Um, there's a few that I kind of keep right on the top of my head that I know where they are. They're easy to for me to remember, and I'll use them to get to where I want to go. So, for instance, if we go to our mission journal here and we go to episodes and I want to go over to Deep Space Nine, I'm going to go ahead and do the Gamma Quadrant, the first one. You'll see I already have it slotted because I use it all the time. I'm going to click trans warp to start that mission. So it's going to take me to the mission start. Uh, which happens to be right outside of DS9. And we'll demonstrate that here now. And so basically I'm able to jump over to Deep Space Nine and um, 
I don't have to use a trans warp or I don't have to wait for that cooldown. So approach Deep Space Nine and there we go. Uh, if I want to go, say, to, I don't know, the Dyson Sphere, you can just use one of the mission starts in the uh, the Dyson Sphere arc, or yeah, the list goes on. I mean, every location around the map basically has missions tied to it. Um, off the top of my head, I, I don't know what's one that drops you right next to, uh, to Earth... Uh, ESD area. Uh, if you guys know, put that down in the description for me. Let me know. That would be helpful. I just haven't spent the time to go through and look. And uh, most of the time, because I use this method to get around wherever I'm going, my uh, trans warp is generally off cooldown, so I can just use it to get to Soul System. But um, if you guys uh, know of some missions that have a starting point at the Soul System, uh, please let me know. That would be very helpful for me. Uh, so there's a free and easy way to get around the universe uh, without having to use your trans warp ability. Um, sometimes this, you know, you don't have this unlocked yet, or you have next to no locations, or it's on cooldown. So that's a, a very nice little workaround to get where you want to go. All right, uh, moving on to item number seven. So number seven, this is for brand new players. Um, you get your first ship. You're doing your your very first things in space. Um, you want to adjust your power settings down here, okay? And there's a couple different ways to view these. So you can view it, this is how it starts. It just kind of shows you what it is. You can go to number two, and there is number three. So I would recommend either going number two or number three. Sounds kind of funny, but let's just move on. Um, so if we go to number three, let's just do that because that's generally what I use. The first thing you're going to want to do is this is going to start off with everything being right in the center. Okay. The first thing you're going to want to do is drag your, why is it not doing that? We want to drag your um, weapons power all the way to maximum. Okay. And then lock it. And then what you're going to want to do is if you want to favor shields or if you're doing science and you want to favor, well, if you're doing science, it's not going to be weapons. And if you're doing science, you're not brand new, just starting the game. So let's forget I even brought that up. Um, but for me personally, I go engine secondary, especially in the beginning because the ships are, are pretty slow with the gear that come on them. Um, but the main thing is whatever you do with what's left over, make sure the first thing you do is you crank the weapons power all the way up. This is going to dramatically increase the amount of damage output you can do and you're going to move through these missions a lot faster, have a lot funner of a time blowing up bad guys instead of it taking three or four minutes, you know, to destroy each ship, especially if it's a large one. Uh, at the lower levels in the game, playing it on normal, um, it, you're, you're not gonna have a big problem with dying. And especially as you start to move up past level 10, 20, and 30, as long as you're putting your ship together properly, following the basic steps, and I have a video for that as well, which I'll list down in the description, dying and those kinds of things, you're not gonna have a big problem with that. So don't feel like, well, if I'm cranking this up, I'm giving something else up, uh, it doesn't matter. The, crank this up you know if you if you want to be a little more you know tanky crank up your shields that makes you feel a little bit better there but you need to have these power settings for your weapons cranked up if not you're just going to do a dramatically less amount of damage than what you could do otherwise um, so the moment you get into your first ship click on the top right here of your power center Click on number three and adjust your weapon settings all the way up. Uh, it will make everything much, much funner. All right, for number eight, we are going to talk about selling your loot and the way you should go about doing that to maximize it. So loot is going to come from little boxes that appear when you destroy things or maybe from mission drops. Uh, TFOs, uh, as you're killing bad guys, you'll get all kinds of, uh, you know, different things um, that can range from shields to tactical consoles to whatever. Sorry for clicking that stuff. It says habit. <laughs> um, so the you can sell it if you want to just get it gone and you don't care about maximizing it, you can click on your replicator. You can go to recycle and let's take a look for instance at this tactical console here. So this tactical console, if I sell it, I will get 4,000 EC and some change. Or the other thing that I was looking at prior is I have an Omni here, which I'm not interested in selling, but just for an example, 17,000, okay? So you can sell the stuff like that or there are particular vendors around uh, the universe here. One of them is on Earth Space Dock. I think there's actually another one up by the shipyard. Uh, the one that I generally use is right over here, and it's where the personal equipment is. And if we talk to the lady here on the left, and we click on her, we just pick any of these, you know, I wanna buy something, whatever, and then you're going to click on the sell. 
And if we sell it to her, let's take a look at those two items again. We're gonna get almost 2000 EC more for selling it to her. Or if we were to look at say that, is that the same thing? Let me make sure we're looking at the same item. It is. And if we go down to the Omni here, you'll see we're gonna get almost, almost 5,000 more. So that doesn't sound like tons, um, but it adds up. And especially, you know, when you go into a TFO, you're gonna at least get three or four items, missions, same kind of thing. If you're doing, you know, patrols and you have a halfway decent build, you can get quite a bit more than that. So, you know, in a couple, you know, hour session of playing, you, you can get, you know, a lot of EC just from doing this and you're getting the stuff anyways, right? And so deleting it or salvaging it, um, and there's reasons to do that and we'll actually talk about that in a moment. But deleting it's just a waste when you could get EC and especially early on in the game, you're not gonna have a lot of that and this stuff adds up and the gear that you may wanna pick up off the exchange and things like that, again, especially at the low levels, is not real expensive. So, you know, doing that and after a couple missions, you can pick yourself up another beam array or whatever it may be. Um, if you wanna maximize the amount of EC that you're getting, go over and talk to the vendor back here. Um, in the description, guys, let me know uh, in the comments if um, wh where some of these other ones are. I think there's another one down over at the shipyard, and there's definitely other vendors around on like DS9 and on um, uh, New Romulus, all, all the different you know main hubs, um, and it's it's only some of them, so it's not all of them. So just to kind of show you, for instance, if I just go over to this other random one here and we talk to this guy, he's gonna give me a lot less for, or not a lot less, but he's gonna give me the same amount as if I just replicated it, right? So if you don't care, just replicate it, save yourself the trip. If you are trying to get every little extra bit, an extra, you know, one to five, uh, you know, K extra, um, definitely, definitely will add up, especially if you're playing a couple days out of the week and you're getting a lot of these loot drops, um, getting, you know, that extra bit is gonna make a huge, huge difference for you. All right, guys, and let's talk about tip number nine. So tip number nine is salvage, and let's just quickly talk about what salvage is and what it's used for. Um, so let's say I have a beam array here, okay, and let's just look at this one. It has modifiers on it of crit D um, and crit H and damage, okay? Let's say that I want them all to be damage modifiers. We go right-click and click on re-engineer item, and here we can actually re-roll what these are. So let's just do one here. So if I unlock this, this will show me if I hover over it what all the potentials are. Um, and it's going to cost us 800 dilithium and 400 salvage. This is a little more important when you know you have a build kind of flushed out, you're starting to get it upgraded, you're, you know, it's the ship you're gonna use, it's the gear you're gonna use, then you'd wanna start looking at doing this. And one of the things that people will find they don't have much of is salvage. And so when you get to a point where you have enough EC, you've built your ship up to kind of where you want it, or, you know, and you're wanting to kind of maximize the gear that you have, re-engineering it can be really helpful. Um, so let, let's go ahead and just do an example here. So we've unlocked 400 salvage and it's gonna cost 800 dilithium. So randomize, sometimes this will pop right away. Sometimes it does not. Sorry, my dog is getting frustrated for some reason and barking. Um, so I got accuracy, that's not what I wanted. And so let's uh, roll it again. And I'm only gonna do this a couple times to show. We're back, uh, now we have crit H times two. So we're just gonna stay with that, we're gonna lock it. Okay, so that's what salvage is used for. It's the only thing that it's used for in the game. In the past, you would have to right click on an item and you would say salvage. Does it say it here? I think I might have that locked. Let's pick something else, so right click. And you could click on that and that would salvage it and it would give you a certain amount of salvage. The mark level of the gear, the quality and what the item is, is gonna give you more or less. So a warp core at, you know, mark 15, which I don't know why you'd salvage a mark 15 is going to give you, um, you know, a lot more than say a low level tactical item. Um, so the, if, if you start getting a lot of stuff and you're wanting to do that, right clicking and clicking and doing all of that can kind of be a nightmare. So they've added in a salvage all basically. So if you click on upgrade and salvage here, um, it's gonna bring you to the upgrade screen, which also is the re-engineer screen and the salvage screen. Now, if I click salvage all, it's gonna salvage all of this stuff and it's all gonna be gone from my inventory. Now, this Omni, I do not wanna salvage, I wanna keep this. So I'm gonna right click on this and I'm going to turn on the protection. 
So when something is protected, you can't delete it or sell it or salvage it on accident. So it protects that item. It's a nice little feature. I probably should have made that one of the tips all by itself, but just know that you can right click on items and you can protect it. So uh, it, it doesn't, uh, you don't accidentally get rid of it, which happens. Um, I'm also realizing that I had two of these consoles here in the last example. So we're going to revisit that in a moment. So I'm going to just turn on the protection for these guys and protection just so we don't salvage those and then i'm going to click on salvage all and yep i want to do that and that's going to give us some salvage so this is also nice let's say you don't care about salvage and let's say you don't care about ec because you know you, you got enough of all of it this is a nice way just to delete a whole bunch of stuff as well um because you can just get it all basically in a couple clicks um I generally, if I don't care about any of those things, I'll normally just use the replicator. So I kind of keep my stuff like anything I want at the top and then all the new stuff I got from, you know, whatever mission I did is all down here. I'll just go to the replicator, go to recycle, go to the bottom and just sell from the bottom up just to get rid of it real qu quick. I can just spam the recycle button. Um, so that's generally what, uh, what I'll do there. And let's go ahead and revisit um, number eight again uh, for that example that we looked at on selling stuff here because I realized I had two consoles that look similar and we may have compared two things that were not the same. Um, so let's look at our replicator, replicating. And on the tactical console, I have two different ones here and I wanna make sure that, oh, I can't, it's not showing up because I have uh, the protection on. So let's just turn it off on one so we know that it's going to be that same one. And of course, I just reorganized. We're doing it live, guys. There we go. Um, this is the worst thing. Like my eyes are good, but my brain just doesn't register. Let's go with the blue one here. Let's turn off that. So that should now show up in our replicator. Okay, so we're at 4,402 to sell that. Through the replicator and if we talk to her to sell this let's see what that goes for here we're at 5500 i think that's about what i said i just realized i had two on there and uh, i'm doing this all in one shot here and i just wanted to make sure that it didn't compare uh, one quality item to another quality two different ones and that it was the same um so we we, we got a little over a, a thousand uh, about 1300 EC difference by selling it to her. Okay, I just wanted to make sure just so uh, we avoided some of the comments uh, of I wasn't comparing two of the same thing. All right, that takes care of everything up to number nine. So number 10 is probably the most important. And uh, this is kind of going to be more of a general just kind of rant for a moment. Um, but the number one tip is to just have fun playing the game. When I first started playing, um, I was kind of oblivious to all this stuff. I didn't even know Twi Twitch existed. You know, I, I wasn't YouTubing how to do this or that. I was just playing STO and just having fun. And as I started to figure things or, you know, find out that there was a reputation system or there was, you know, duty officers or whatever, there were these huge rabbit holes. And luckily I kind of stumbled on to, you know, one and then a little bit later, the next one. And if you go through and watch some of the, you know, the beginner guides or some of the higher end builds, there's all, you know, you get exposed to all these different systems kind of at once. And if you try and just jump into all of them, figure them all out, you're going to find yourself just overwhelmed and lost. And, and then also, you know, the grind involved with all of them, which aren't bad, but they can seem really overwhelming when you're brand new and you're looking at all this stuff and you're like, oh my God, not only, you know, is there the grind, but I have to you know, understand how all this stuff works. And it's a lot. Um, just play the game, play the game, have fun, take one system on at a time and, you know, spend a week or two just kind of playing with that. So a lot of them kind of lead to, you know, the next one or similar in the way that, you know, the structure is. Um, so, you know, just take your time on that stuff. If it if it's overwhelming, just pick one, play through the story. There's a lot of story, continue to play through and, you know, and then look into these systems just kind of one at a time and check them out. Um, Cause I know the game itself is, it's, it's huge, it's in depth um, when it comes to all of these layered systems and it can be really, really, um, you know, overwhelming and a little bit discouraging as well. 
And, uh, you know, I'd hate for, you know, people to find themselves in those positions. I've seen, you know, comments on some of the videos where it's just like, man, this is just, it's, there's too much. And I get it. I, 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 I do. And it's easy, you know, for me or other people that make videos and we talk about the stuff we've been, you know, playing the game forever. And so we just understand it. But, you know, I can remember back, you know, three, four years ago when I started playing, I mean, when I started finding some of this stuff, I mean, it was just insane, you know? So, um, my, my tip number 10 is just to have fun, play those story missions, if you're starting the game out brand new and you're at level 10, half of these, you know, build videos and all these different things out there, they're not, they don't matter. You can't do anything with it. And if you're starting at level 10, trying to build towards that, you're going to find yourself really frustrated, you know, work through the story, level up to, you know, level 65, start to look at some of these other systems and understand how they work as they unlock. And um, there's plenty of individual videos, you know, from myself and other people on, each of the specific systems. Just don't feel like you need to learn all of them at once. Take your time, just make sure you're having fun playing the game. That is number one, that's why we're here doing this. So, all right guys, well, I, I hope that was helpful uh, for the tips and tricks. Um, there are certainly tons and tons more. I'm sure I missed all kinds of them, but I just wanted to keep it to 10. Those are the 10 that um, I, I came up with that are most helpful for me. I, I run also a, a free to play account and have some newer characters on there. And so I'm, you know, I'm going back. It keeps it fresh in my mind. What are the things that are really helpful for me right off the bat that I wish I knew um, that I didn't know back when I first started playing the game? Um, and so those were some of the top ones for me that, you know, just makes life a little bit easier and helps set you up for, you know, success on some of these resources and things like that going forward in the game. Uh, so let me know what you guys think. Uh, let me know what, uh, what other uh, tips and tricks you guys might have. Uh, I definitely would enjoy learning some new stuff there to make my life easier on some of this and some of the other viewers I'm sure would also appreciate that. So, all right guys, uh, until next time, as always, I really appreciate everybody. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, uh, I, I really appreciate that. If you haven't subbed to the channel, I would also appreciate if you do that, hit the thumbs up and again, give me your thoughts down in the comments. Um, here are two more videos for you guys to check out if you're new players on free to play builds and some basics on some of the systems uh, that STO has in it. Uh, check those two out and until next time, have a good one and thank you for watching.